362 an 804 i guess that's what we got hey everybody what's happening welcome back to my channel dana k is the name and sonic flare is the game how's everybody doing one of the things that i want to talk to you guys about this evening is a topic that's obviously very near and dear to all of us audiophiles, music lovers, gearheads, uh, record collectors, vinyl collectors, uh, record aficionados, anyone who really wants to listen to music at its purest, most essential form. And that is, of course, craft recording and their small batch process and launch, which one could say went off with a whole bunch of glitches. Which kind of reminds me of uh, Office Space, the movie. It was a glitch in the system. Uh, we fixed the glitch and uh, the problem's gone. And so let's see if we can fix the glitch. We're probably not going to fix the glitch. I'm guessing we're going to maybe come up with some creative ideas that hopefully someone from Kraft will listen to. Concord Music Group, maybe you're paying attention. But before that, a huge shout out to the sponsor of this show. Who is that? It's you guys. The entire community. Let me tell you something. I am beyond stoked. Beyond any measure. Anything that I could have thought this channel would do and would happen to, you guys have completely shattered the expectations. Overtaken it by leaps and bounds. I feel like I'm on cloud nine right now and, I, you know, sky's the limit, I guess. What am I talking about? Well, let me give you perspective. As I always say, uh, perspective is the mother of all clarity. We launched this channel Sunday, five days ago. I think I had 28 subscribers and most of those were came over from 45 RPM audiophile Michael Ludwigs, whom you guys know I've done a bunch of videos with. And, and shared some content to. And so, you know, we started off with three videos, or excuse me, two videos, and then I added the, the third one on Tuesday, I believe. And, you know, I was like, okay, how many subscribers am I going to get? You know, it's, it's, it's just already so many amazing YouTubers out there talking about vinyl, talking about hi-fi. You know, I figured, hey, I've got this little niche going, you know, that th there's a lot of people that talk about vinyl, that talk about hi-fi and high-end audio, but I haven't really found too many that kind of try to marry them, mish them up together, right? And so I figured that's what I want to do with Sonic Flare, right? And it, here we are. Monday, I cracked 100 subscribers midday and a, a giant shout out to Chat at Acoustic Sounds, AB at Impex Records, um, Shane at Intervention Records, the team at Wilson Audio, very near and dear friends of mine for, you know, relinking this video, reposting it on their Facebook social media accounts. You guys are all so awesome. I really sincerely appreciate everyone. And here we are, Friday evening. The clock is about to drop, and I've got 1,200 and 22 subscribers flabbergasted seriously it's nuts so again can't thank you all enough uh, you know where are we gonna go with this channel i you know join me on this journey i think it's gonna be great i think it's gonna be fun i think we're gonna look at things a little differently than how other thing uh, how other people look at things we're gonna explore things differently and you know I, i'm super pumped to be here with you guys so Let's get right back into craft recordings and small batch. So I just today received my second copy. So the first one, of course, was Coltrane, uh, Lush Life. Uh, I, I was about to say many of you have got it. The reality of it is a thousand of you have got it. And I'm one of them. So 999 of you got it. So... Apparently, Craft Recordings had, you know, small batch in mind of, you know, limited production, limited scope, limited releases. And a couple of months went by, and of course, Yusuf Latif's Eastern Sounds was up. 
which is one of my all-time favorite albums by Yusuf. Phenomenal, you know, Eastern-themed songs, uh, or excuse me, uh, music, and, and, and playmanship and craftsmanship, and, and just, I mean, amazing. And, you know, everybody was like, hey, cool. Coltrane's came out. Eastern Sounds is going to come out. No big deal, right? I mean, it's a thousand records. So before we get into a little bit of a deep dive into that, you know, my, my first sort of generic impression of this newcomer, which really is a, a fork off. So so the Concord Music Group, obviously, um, you know, they they forked off this, this whole uh, small batch section and by implication, obviously, what they're what they were, you know, trying to get into, frankly, is of course the success that you know Mobile Fidelity had with One Step, uh, UHQR Acoustic Sounds, uh, you know, Impex with all of their amazing reissues, and all this sort of resurgence, especially the Patricia Barber that they just came out with, which is also a One Step, beautiful slipcase cover. Uh, Michael and I did a video on that, uh, actually with AB. Uh, a couple of months ago, so I, I'll link to uh, to the video with AB. You guys can check it out, and if you haven't watched it, it's it's, it's brilliant. She's awesome. She totally gets the whole aspect and concept of you know creating an experience, which which really, frankly, I mean, if you're gonna spend a hundred dollars, hundred twenty five dollars on a record in today's day and age, twenty twenty one, as I'm making this video, you're looking for an experience, right? You're not just looking for a record you're gonna throw on your turntable and call it a day and that's it and good night and you know i'm just gonna play some music and you know i'll read the newspaper right you're gonna you're serious about collecting records you're serious about music and what you know what you want is that quintessential experience you want that you know wow man i'm you know i feel like a king i feel like the customer i, I feel like a customer that has really been treated with with you know white gloves um, that, that I, I spent a hundred dollars or $125 of my hard earned money, especially in this day and age again, to, to support the industry and, and get something really, truly exceptionally worthwhile. And so of course, you know, impacts fabulous job, you know, uh, mobile fidelity, incredible job with their one steps and Chad with UHQR, now the third title, Miles Davis, uh, Kind of Blue, of course, the best-selling jazz album of all times. And so here comes along the, the Concord Music Group and, uh, you know, Craft Recordings with Small Batch. And, you know, I mean, on, on first glance, I, I'm just, look, I've, I've been around, you know, very high-end products uh, for the last 14 years of my life professionally, 15 years almost. And so when I look at this, you know, the first impression that I get, I think they did a nice job, right? I mean, the, the slip cover was a nice, nice addition. Uh, I think this little pullout tab uh, that they actually marketed and advertised as such in when, when uh, the Coltrane album was released, I think that's a nice touch. It helps you pull the, the record out of the sleeve. So that's, you know, very neat, very sort of, you know, taking it to the next step as far as packaging. The slipcover itself, I, you know, I, I don't know. I, I think they could have done a better job. They could have used uh, linen, uh, which of course is expensive, uh, or at least they could have used some higher quality material. I mean, this to me feels a little plasticky. My impression, but hey, you know, it's uh, it's my channel, so it's my impression. Um, you know, the embossed, uh, the the embossed uh, lettering and all that, very nice touch. I like the, the sort of high-end look of the flat black cover. Uh, so they did a great job with that. I think this insert here, the, um, uh, the, the record cover, I think that's brilliant. That looks really nice. So I think they did an overall a great job. I probably would have used something a little higher end as far as material for tactile quality, touch and feel, but that's okay. You know, you look at the covers and the covers, they're okay. Uh, the, the, the big miss, I think, here really is, in my opinion, they should have been glossy covers because the originals were glossy covers, right? And they're not. They're, they're flat, flat black, or excuse me, flat, um, uh, flat uh, um, material. And so they, you know, 
right off the bat, you kind of lose a little bit of shimmer, a little bit of that originality that, that comes along with the originals. You know, I think as far as, you know, copying the artwork itself, they did a nice job, the lettering. Uh, it's not just a scant copy. Somebody actually with, with knowledge of uh, Adobe uh, and, and type fonts and stuff went in there and really cleaned things up. So this looks really nice, very presentable. Uh, on on Eastern Sounds, I think the the image of Yusuf is a little too pixelated for my taste. So they probably could have pulled out a little more detail going into that. But, you know, it's okay. I mean, look, at the end of the day, the packaging is the packaging. I think it's fine. The, you know, the both records were cut and mastered by Bernie Grunman, which, you know, really, in reality, nothing more needs to be said. I mean, you know, I don't care what record you put in front of me. If I see BG in the Dead Wax, and I know it came out of his studio, or Chris Bellman, uh, who who came through the lineage of, of Bernie and, and was one of his, you know, obviously a major students. Um, look, nothing needs to be said. It's going to be a phenomenal sounding record. He will extract everything there is in the tapes to, to get the best sound out of it. So I'm not concerned about that. And in fact, I may say the Yusuf Latif. So I played this against the... I believe they used the 1991 metal parts they had from the OJC series for the currently available, still in print, Eastern sounds that you can get. I have both copies, of course. Uh, the black vinyl, as well as that marble blue-colored vinyl that was a special run. And uh, I'm pretty sure this was the OJC metal parts that they used. And um, it, look, th this, uh, you know, they, they post a picture of the tape um inside the the slip cover so you know it's authentic and the look the sound to me uh you know much bigger much more lifelike i think there is a lot more presence so i i of course i i played this on the lovely wilson's uh the the xvx's that you see in the background there that there is a certain sense of organic quality to the Bernie Grunman reissue that I'm missing on the, the 91 metal parts. There is uh, a, a much more tempo, it seems. There is much more density of information. Uh, there's more separation as well in the instruments, the layers. Uh, it is a, a you know typical sort of hard left, hard right recording uh, of the era, which, you know, nothing new about that. Um, so sound wise, look, sound wise, I have no problem with this. I think it's, it's a great sounding record. Uh, you know, are these the best sounding records in the prestige catalog? Uh, no, I'm pretty sure they're not. I, I, I think, in fact, I know there's, there's titles that, you know, uh, hopefully they're going to, uh, to be releasing that are, are far superior sounding titles just from a sound quality and recording quality perspective than Lush Life and uh eastern sounds i mean i think especially lush life is you know chad did that on 45 a couple of years ago it's a it's a decent recording is it great eh you know debatable right it's the music i mean it's coltrane and yusuf latif so now that this is out of the way what's my beef with craft or not so much beef even more like you know i'm scratching my head and trying to figure out what are these guys thinking? And of course, what I'm referring to is the issue around the pre-orders and the orders, really, of particularly the Yusuf Latif after, after the entire internet, the entire vinyl community, everybody complained in no small way, loudly, about how they perceived the first Lush Life record to have been released with only a thousand records and, you know, basically selling out just like that, right? And so everybody kind of thought, hey, wait a second, you know, maybe they'll do 3,000 copies. Uh, you know, maybe they'll do 5,000 copies. And what they end up doing, they ended up doing a thousand copies. And again, since I have one here, that means that only 999 of you uh, or left out there with another copy. So, you know, congrats, I guess, group hug. We're all in this, uh, we're all in this journey together. And, you know, the first thing obviously that comes to mind is 
it's by definition when when you announce a title of a program of of you know a mission the likes of you know reissuing the prestige catalog in very high quality and you call it small batch the implication is that it's going to be small batch you know no matter what right i mean i i don't suspect that we will ever see a small batch release of 10,000 copies of whatever the title may be Personally, I don't even think we're going to see anything close to 5,000 titles. Um, I don't know this. I, I, I don't know anyone at the Concord Music Group. Uh, I don't know anyone at Craft Recordings. This is just pure conjecture and, you know, thinking out loud uh, and, and, you know, communicating with you guys. Um, so fr from the get-go, they limited themselves with a product that is in extremely high demand, right? I mean, hey, unless you were sleeping under the covers or under a rock or just woke up from uh, a beauty sleep of 20 years, we had this thing called COVID. We had this thing called global pandemic. We had this thing called vinyl boom times 10, right? I mean, before COVID, vinyl was booming. During COVID, vinyl was booming even more, which is perplexing and amazing on so many different levels, a whole different conversation. That said, what's fascinating to me is the the amount of, of business that record sellers, uh, pressing plants, reissue companies have produced over the last year, it's astronomical. And some of the numbers that I've heard in confidence are simply out of this world. So here comes along Craft Recordings and does a thousand titles. First of all, what I've heard is that this was all basically baked in 2019, but for whatever reason, they ended up not releasing it just yet. And so it's, uh, you know, it's basically something that was done, delivered, sealed, signed. And so you can't retroactively go back and say, hey, you know, gee, we, we you know, we probably should have pressed 3,000 or 5,000 of this. Guess what? You can't go back and redo it because it's already done. So, um, you know, from, from that perspective, uh, I think they, they had the cards they, they had, and they are the only ones that can see the cards. I mean, it's like this big game of poker, right? What I think they could have done a lot better, in my humble opinion, is by knowing that you have a, a, a extremely high demand for a product that you're going to release. Scarcity is built in, not only from the product itself, because you know you're going to release only a limited number of products, a thousand in this case, but you have the scarcity of, guess what? Hey, RTI, uh, can you press another thousand records for me? <laughs> sure pal what are you smoking not gonna happen hey chad can you press an extra no i can't right and you know palace same thing uh universal same thing gz same thing guess what you're not gonna be able to get a pressing plan today to press you anything more than what you already have uh that was part of the the initial order right just because of the demand because of you know the pandemic and so on and so forth. So from the get-go, they were in a corner, right? We got a thousand records we're going to sell. And, you know, they're going to sell out. I mean, look, I think at this point in time, you know, if you put out a thousand, uh, you know, copies of, of any number of records that you can think of, they're going to be gone in like a nanosecond anyway, regardless of anything else. I think where they really, really shot themselves in the foot, in my opinion, is that they pre-announced the fact that the sale would take place at such and such time on such and such day. And given what's going on with vinyl, flippers, people buying things as investments, people, you know, just wanting to buy records, period. Uh, you're going to have a run, Sturm und Drang, onto records like you've never seen before. And so guess what? They sent the pre-order emails out with, you know, the folks that had already purchased Lush Life. You know, here's your access code. And guess what? 8 a.m., I think it was 8 a.m. for the pre-order for the first 300 or so titles. They were gone in, I, I want to say, like, literally probably 10, 15 seconds. 
I think what they should have done is like ERC. Now, many people say, well, you know, ERC does even less records. They only do 300 records. They only do 150 records. Yes, but what you're forgetting to enter into the equation is that the records are considerably more expensive than these records, right? And so you compare, a, you know, an ERC for 450 bucks to a, a Concord Music Group craft recording small batch for $100. That's a significant delta. Right off the bat, you're going to have a much, much, much smaller market uh, and, and folks looking to spend that kind of money to get a record. And so, you know, it's not really apples to apples comparison. Um, you know, they, they, plus what ERC doesn't do is they don't pre-announce anything. It's kind of like free for all, right? Hey, every month or so, thereabouts, every four weeks, we post something on our website, new titles coming out. You can order it. Boom. We're not going to tell you when it, you know, the only thing we're going to tell you is when it's sold out. So it spreads like, you know, the word of mouth. Obviously, websites, they don't really need any word of mouth at this point in time. I mean, they've been around for a couple of years now, and their records sell out really quickly, which is incredible to believe. So anyway, um, you know, where does that leave us, and what's next for Craft Recording Small Batch? You know, I'm sure they're going to announce, uh, you know, obviously the next title probably fairly soon. I think that even this title is only going to be a 1,000 copies. In fact, I, I, I would bet that it's only a thousand copies and i think that it's going to be the same schlamiel schlamassel bamboozle as it was with lush life and even more amplified with eastern sounds that you know people are going to bitch moan and complain because it's going to sell out in five seconds and that's it right so you know boom repeat and uh, you know my guess is that probably for the next title, the fourth or fifth title, maybe they'll add more capacity. You would certainly think that they would. So we'll see. We'll have to see. One thing I, I just remembered to, uh, to, to mention is, of course, this was pressed on top of it. Uh, this is uh, not only a one-step, but it is a one-step pressed on VRX 900 vinyl which, of course, is um, the, the same vinyl formula that Mobile Fidelity uses. Uh, you know, how much of the sound quality is attributable to Bernie Grunman's mastering versus the VRX 900 formula versus the one-step process? Hard to say, right? I think the vinyl formula plays a tremendous part in the overall sound quality. So... You know, we'll just, I mean, ideally what I'd love to have is a like-for-like like comparison, right? Hey, here's here's the same mastering, the same metal parts, uh, you know, pressed at the same time on regular vinyl, and here it is as VRX 900. But anyway, where do we go from here? Um, we shall see. Y you know, I think... They have a great opportunity to improve a couple of small things. I think that they should do glossy covers. I think they really should think twice about doing a pre-launch sale next time with the with the third title. And you know, I think they need to bump the the pressings up to three four thousand copies because obviously people are wanting to buy them and they're in demand. So, you know, we're uh, we're gonna be in this journey together. We'll see what happens. I'm super stoked about whatever that third title is gonna be. Make it a three for three. And, um, you know, we'll tune in again. Thank you guys for watching. Appreciate it very much. And we'll chat soon. See you guys later. Bye.